Wait, why are they all predicting energy and Cloud9? What is this prediction? Is this for who's gonna win the whole thing? Is that for like the entire event winner, I imagine? Yeah, no, nobody getting it right. I would have predicted uh, energy to win this. I did predict energy to win the, the event before it started, so I wasn't just going off the, um, I wasn't just going off the, what do you call it? The day one results. I did see the RLCS season seven trailer. Yeah, it looks really, really good. I, lo I would love if they just branded RLCS entirely around like kind of synth wave. I mean, we're listed as some, some synth wave right now. It's something I really enjoy. Um, but yeah, let's just uh, give a quick roster reminder to you guys who aren't uh, aware. I'll move myself a little bit to the left. We do have Yukio playing for Dignitas in this matchup. Um, alongside Turbo Pulsa and Violent Panda. And Chicago is the one replacing Kronovi on G2. So both teams having one uh, replacement player. Um, from last season. Now, with the previous rosters, so Dignitas versus G2, in the past, Dignitas actually had a really, really good win record against uh, G2. And I've, I've seen the um, E-League 20... What was it? 2017 Grand Finals result of G2 beating Dignitas. I've seen that be brought up a lot in the past. Oh my goodness, Lee Daddy. I'm, I'm going to mute the sub alert noise for now so we're not hearing it too much. But cheers so much for five gifted subs uh, in a row. Welcome to all the new subs who just got gifted. Be sure to thank uh, Lee Daddy. I'll I'll do all the rest of the sub shoutouts in a second. Now, um, yeah, like I was saying, a lot of people like to bring up the... The series that uh, Dignitas lost to G2 that one time where um, G2 beat them at E-League. Okay, finally somebody put that shot in. About time. I think Violet Panda just missed a like, really really easy goal there. <laughs> so did Yukio. But uh, anyway. I think that it, it, there was this like rumor going around the Rocket League community, or at least this opinion going around the Rocket League esports fan base, um, that G2 were one of the teams that have a good chance against Dignitas because they beat them that one time in... Uh, in E-League. And as far as I know, that's the only time they beat them. Is that is that correct? Or did I uh, forget about another matchup? I reckon Dignitas, they must have beaten G2 about five five times or something in the past uh, in series, in, in LAN environment series. And then that one, of course, the grand final that they matched up against each other, G2 did win. But you would expect with um, Dignitas picking up Yukio and then G2 picking up Chicago, I'd say both pretty like evenly matched players. Um, like very, very hot prospects going into the rest of this year. You would expect uh, Dignitas to continue to dominate here. They still have Turbo Pulse, so they still have Violent Panda, um, and G2 have struggled against them in the past. Jane Apps hasn't looked as hot recently. Rizzo actually has uh, looked very good recently, but yeah, you would, you would not think that uh, they'd be able to compete with Dignitas just yet. I think that they would need to, or most people I think expected them to need more time with Chicago to figure things out. But we'll see how this goes. There's a good solo goal by Rizzo, actually. Let's uh, see how this one develops. It's not usual to get dribbling goals in 3v3. It's actually just a complete whiff by, by Violent Panda. Let's set this one up. I have to see this again. Why did Violent Panda just whiff this ball? Did he, like, think Rizzo was going to hit it or something? No, he just went whiffed it on the outside. That's very strange. All right, we'll go forward again. Rizzo did dribble Turbo, who kind of got stuck in no man's land, and then uh, maybe should have just rushed a challenge, honestly. Uh, Turbo Pulsar there, but it's, it's it's mainly on Violent Panda to at least make contact with the ball. You, you can't just be whiffing the ball there um, in that contest situation. Beautiful approach by Turbo here. This is this is noteworthy. So Turbo coming from the complete blind spot of the defense uh, in this position. And it's only a great pre-jump by Chicago that gets a save. I do love that, uh, that approach coming in from the far post. You can hit near post. Well, you can usually arrive at the near post to take those shots like with the one we just saw just as early as um, a player who's actually waiting at the near post. I want to see this in, in uh, interaction in a second. Uh, but yeah, obviously the far post position also has better coverage for high balls and cross the goal balls. Now, OCE Phil, thanks to the prime sub. Uh, mini heels and Hiroshi with 250 bits, much appreciated. Also, Fifux and Lack Snacks, both prime sub and welcome you guys. Um, and I think there is that's everybody. Lead Daddy also resub for 23 months in a row. Zero one, welcome back. All right, let's uh, 
get back into this match. Let's uh, let's see what happened here. Yeah, not the best performance so far by Valentine in this game. He's looked a bit messy with uh, a couple of his plays. Not really um, rotating very conventionally at the moment. And also, yeah, Yukio did get bumped out of goal right there. That's a nice uh, play by G2. They're going to take a lead here in game one. For, so, you know, so far I've mostly been talking and doing a little general uh, intro to this game, but it seems like um, the lack of KDOP... I mean, if there, if nothing else, I've not seen much of this new G, uh, Dignitas roster play, but the lack of KDOP, um, if nothing else, it's just like, it seems to take make Dignitas look less solid. KDOP is... Just such a solid player. Don't let that go in. Okay, Turbo does get the save. Thank goodness for digging us there. Um, sorry, what what am I missing here? Give Vicanus what he wants. I don't know uh, what you say. Whoa! How did this? When did the, how did this slip past me? Vicanus extra 1,050 bits. Getting one of Mike versus Lethemer show match. If they're both down, I could ask, mate. Thanks for the 1,050 bits. <laughs> First of all, I could ask later. Uh, sorry, I I remember just remember I muted the alert, so I didn't even notice that one. Uh, I might might be better to mute, mute alerts sometimes during the replay reviews anyway. All right, let's see what happens. What happens next? I do expect Dignitas to like be a very very strong team. Uh, in you know the in looking at 2019 as a whole, I expect I would be surprised if they changed this um, roster. They said they were faster in a Wasoi interview. Well, Yukio is a very quick player, and I wouldn't be surprised if the addition of Yukio ahead of KDOP made Dignitas quicker. Sometimes when you're playing with one fast player, the rest of the team kind of step up and you just try to be speedy all around. It's not like Dignitas were a solo team to begin with. Oh, if only Chicago had boost, he could have maybe followed through there. Um, Illy, Ill Ike Pie, I'm going to call it. Ill Ike Pie, thanks to the Twitch Prime sub. That is much appreciated, man. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, so we talked a lot about Dignitas. Let's talk about G2 and the Chicago acquisition. So, first things first, I do like this change. I think that they're going to be able to um, more consistently match the top quality teams worldwide. Sometimes, you know, for a team that have been together as long as G2 had, a change, you know, can just motivate the other players in the team to not just the player joining but also motivate the other players in the team to step up Chicago is a really good player definitely like the rookie uh, of the year for NA besides Justin I would say and one of the hottest prospects going into this year it's as far as transfer transfers go but I'm most interested to see the impact on J Naps because he's I think the player that fell off a little bit wow okay pull shot saved by Rizzo there onto Chicago yeah, JNAPS, he fell off because he started off the year so ridiculously high. He had a very impressive uh, DreamHack Leipzig performance. He looked great at E-League at the end of 2017. And then throughout 2018, he looked like he might be in a bit of a slump, but he never really came out of it. He kind of stayed at this like lower than usual level for JNAPS. He had his moments. He scored some bangers. But uh, overall, nowhere near as impressive as the previous year for him. So if JNAPS can get back up to his previous level... Rizzo can keep playing as well as he did for the whole of 2018, especially towards the end. Um, I think G2 have got a real chance of being not just a top contender, but maybe even being the best team in North America. We'll have to wait and see. That's very dependent on how well Cloud9 continues to do, because they've been uh, the team in North America recently. Um, that being said, NRG have a pretty good matchup against NR uh, Cloud9 historically. Have you noticed that whoever is spectating randomly cycles through the spectating options by pressing H? The player with uh, the key player with names at the bottom of the screen would randomly pop up. Um, the reason for that is because if you right click enough times, I think, to go to AutoCam, and then you come off AutoCam back onto player cam, sometimes the player names come back up at the bottom and you have to press H a bunch to make them go away. So that's just, I think, a, a bug with the spectator client. Right, 1-0 G2. Very unfortunate landing here. Let's actually take a look at this um, for Chicago. Because I say unfortunate, but it's also um, a misplay. So Chicago here. About to rotate out. The only reason I pause here is because this happens a lot in uh, ranked games. And you guys can 
Learn a lot by watching what happens here. Try not to do this. Um, he just dodges to get back into defense, but he doesn't look where he's going, and he actually just lands on top of Rizzo. So very big misplay there. I mean, it's unfortunate that he just dodged in the in the exact direction that Rizzo was moving in, but that should have been probably should have been a goal uh, for Dignitas. I'm not sure why <laughs> Turbo and Panda are both just barreling down the line here at the same time. Maybe get a bit too excited, but they won't get the goal just yet. Happened after every goal. Ah, so they were going to direct your camera for every goal, I see. Ah, so one of Mike's down to play Leth, if uh, Leth is down. Wait, what happened here? How did this... How did this not get contested for G2? This is very strange to see a shot like this not get contested at any moment. Oh, JNAP's just turned around and ran away. Alright, well. <laughs> I, uh, this is, um... This is, oh, this is not the worst turnaround by JNAP's, but let's just... Let's just, uh pause here because this is quite interesting. So JNAPS has turned around here. He's not going to challenge Turbo Pulsa on the wall, which is which is okay. Um, JNAPS' job here is not to prevent Turbo Pulsa from taking a shot. His job is actually to prevent Turbo Pulsa from controlling this ball and dribbling. That's his main job. If Turbo is able to get this ball down onto the ground and dribble, that would be a problem. JNAPS would, has not applied enough aggression. Um, so really... JNAPS just wants to force Turbo to make a play here, and he kind of does so by faking a challenge. He can't ch he, he's never going to get a block up high like uh, this anyway, so that's fine. But when uh, this does happen, when that ball goes off the wall, now, since JNAPS has forced this play to occur, as soon as the play happens, someone else for G2 has to move in. It's the same thing in pretty much any uh, 3v3 play. You have one player will fake a challenge to force a flick or force a pass or force a long shot, force a clear, and then someone else, as soon as the play is revealed, moves in to intercept it. Unless it's really, really, the, if this play was super close to JNAPS, he could go himself, but it isn't. It t tends not to be. Um, so, yeah, there should be somebody here from G2 to challenge this ball. Rizzo by the looks of things. Maybe. The only reason I, uh, that Rizzo obviously wouldn't be able to go to this is if he didn't have any boost at all, but he should have some boost. I think that there should be at least some boost on Rizzo. Let's look at the last time that Rizzo was involved in the play. Here he is here. And he's got four boosts. Now, he's just going to run away to this side. There's 12. Now, he's probably got time here to pick up another 12 pad. Maybe another one. Another one. I reckon Rizzo here should at least have 50 boost, and that is plenty to challenge this ball, which is moving away from Violent Panda. Think about the other options. I mean, if Rizzo thinks he's getting beaten to that ball. Well, so what? I don't think that staying on the goal line is going to get a save very often. You need There needs to be a challenge here for G2. That's why I've like paused this and looked over this goal so many times. It looks like things Rizzo was thinking about challenging, turned around, uh, pussied out the challenge, and then just didn't go. And they've conceded. That's uh, got to be a misplay in my book. Need to have a follow-up on uh, a play like that from JNAPS to get Turbo off, uh, off the ball. Yeah, 1-0 Dignitas game 2. They didn't have to do too much for it. Just a pretty slow infield pass that didn't get contested. It's actually strange because Rizzo does like to uh, intercept passes. In my experience watching him play, he does try and read those. Not the not usually a player to um, react to them so much as to read them, but of course everything's situational. Um... You can hear Twitch name be pronounced the Nexus. I tried the Nexus PT. I like the ceiling double touch stamp from JNAPS, even though it doesn't work. That would have been pretty hard to read from Dignitas' perspective. A lot of sitting back now from Dig. This is actually something that they used to do with KDOP as well. When they get a 1 0 lead, they would just. Um, have a very, very deep third man, and then play hyper-aggressive with their first man, and play a pretty, you know, supportive second man to that first man challenge. And the fact that they so rarely double committed, and so rarely um, let a ball get contested for free, made them very hard to score on when they took a lead. Um, it looks like that's still the case. The rotation should be pretty good with UQ on the team. Uh, Dignitas rotation, that is. I would be surprised if Yukio didn't slot in quite well, actually. Um, the one thing I'm not as confident about for them is actually their comeback potential. I don't know if without KDOP they're going to have 
quite the same comeback potential if we compare Yukio and Kdop in that regard. Yukio is, you know, very good at flashy aerial goals and very quick to, um, you know, get fast boomers on the on the ball from distance sometimes. But um, Kdop is just a more consistent striker. He's just better at clutching those goals. Actually, see pretty similar play here to what Dignitas scored with in their first goal of the game. And only goal of the game. This time G2 don't get an equalizer. It's a pretty good touch by Chicago, but he gets beaten to the corner. When you do realize that you're getting, uh, that, you know, Dignitas are sitting back like this, super deep third man, just trying to hold on to the lead and uh, maybe play off the misplays of their opponents. If you realize that's happening, the usually the best way to try and break them down and get a goal is by actually taking control of the ball. You don't want to hard clear into a team that are doing this. Sometimes, of course, you have to if you've got no other option. You just want a little bit of time to breathe, but you don't you don't really want to be hard clearing against uh, Dignitas in this position because they, they'll they pretty much always have somebody there to hard clear it straight back and time's going to be wasted from the clock. Now, that would have been a beautiful play. Well, Panda's actually got... A little bit out of position though, trying to follow up on a shot that wasn't his to go for. And maybe a little bit better organization on G2's part would have given them a good chance to score here. Looks like for the most part Violent Panda has uh, solidified out. He looked a bit dodgy in game one, but now he looks uh, pretty solid, as you would expect. Oh wow, J-Nap's actually getting a mind game here. I wonder if this is going to be a goal. Wow. Yeah, we have to see this again, so... Just uh, JNAP's getting a shot over the top here, and then Yukio actually does what uh, Justin was getting a lot, getting wrong a lot in the final. He um, he's moving up as a third man on what's essentially a 50-50. JNAP's does get the beat to the ball. That should be Yukio's, but he advanced a little bit too much. He maybe advanced because he thought Violent Panda was going to be back sooner. It's unusual to see that happen when the they have... Oh, wow, these saves. We need to watch this exchange again. Like I said, it's unusual to see that happening when you're already in the lead, though. Um, Hugh, no, sorry, I can't analyze your kickoffs, man. The chip infield, Chicago actually going for the shot behind the goalie. Too low, though. j -Nap's getting pre-jumped by Turbo as well. That's two pre-jump saves in a row for Dignitas. Impressive stuff. Yeah, or Rizzo actually looking for a, a double touch off the ceiling. Doesn't quite get it. G2 have tried to use the ceiling a few times this uh, the second game to surprise Dignitas. And you know in 2019, double touches off the ceiling or double touch rebounds off the ceiling, off the floor are definitely going to be harder to read than uh, just the standard off the back wall double touch, which is more predictable these days. Yeah, you can kind of forgive G2 for overextending here. They're pretty, getting pretty frustrated uh, by Dignitas. Like those pre-jump saves maybe got them a bit tilted, and now they have lost another goal. All over 22922. Thanks to the 12 month in a row Prime sub. I do appreciate that. Oh, where's the bump? Okay, that should maybe be a goal. Still kind of open. There we go. Really nice setup by G2 here. Rizzo with uh, an outplay, not just taking one player out of the game, but also getting the ball to j -Naps to pop off the back wall. Very nicely, very nicely done, using all three players. Cucumber Hunter, thanks to the Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that a lot. Oh, you mean analyze the kickoff tactics, use this game? Oh, I thought you meant your kickoff. My bad, I misread. Um, kickoff strats are sometimes quite hard to see in these tournaments because uh, they leave director camera on, and you can't really see what everybody's doing. If their uh, if their auto cam settings are not the best, so it might be quite hard to see the kickoff strats. Oh my goodness, you have got to be kidding me! That is fantastic by G2. Look at this on zero seconds to try and keep the the hopes of a comeback alive. They put the ball in their own net. <laughs> I mean, they needed something. Uh, <laughs> It wasn't, it wasn't what they needed, though. This, unfortunately, was not quite uh, the right goal. Good try. Good try by G2. 
This is the own goal you asked for the other day. Oh, right. Okay, okay. Yeah, Shady would definitely love this play. Three-man own goal. It looked like third man might have just been there for support, but still definitely a solid two-man own goal, if nothing else. Rizzo and Yukio's name's getting a bit cropped there in this graphic. Let's move on. This is now best of five remaining. Okay, things to note so far. Dignitas, pretty similar strategy as they used to have once they're ahead. Just play a super deep third man. Don't mess up with... Uh, uh, with hard clears, just always be ready to catch them. So if you're not going to beat Dignitas by hard clearing, what do you do? Well, why not Why not ask uh, Cloud9, who had the best record against Dignitas historically. They mostly preferred to... Uh, well, that's a camera change and a half. What on earth? What is this? Sorry, but wait, what is... Why? Uh, let me pause there for a second. But yeah, Cloud9 mostly having success against Dignitas because they didn't hard clear. They actually just tried to pass out of defense instead. The majority of the time. Okay, what was this about? Violent Panda just about to try and dribble Chicago and we've gone to this view for whatever reason. What is this? Monstrosity of a view. This just makes the players look rubbish at the game. I, I'm going to pause here for a second. I, I, I'm going to, you know, weigh in on this uh, camera angle. I don't know what this... Why does the pitch look so wide? Some weird FOV going on here. But um, the reason I don't like this is because to me it makes the players look kind of rubbish. You know? It, it just makes uh, what they're doing look easy. Like, hits on the ball look really, really slow and random and not accurate at all. Movements just look, again, slow and silly. So I don't really, li I don't really like it personally. I don't think it looks that good. A lot of people seem to like this view. I don't know why. Yeah, I've, I've seen a couple people say that they like it. I don't like it at all. Especially with the face cams up, literally blocking like part of the goal. I don't know if that's a good idea. Um, yeah. Maybe there's a better way to do that. I don't know if that's a, like the, the final form of the wide angle view. I liked how League of Rockets did it for the 12 Titans tournaments. Like He, he, would, he would be very selective with when he would do the, the wide angle view. Usually, uh, like showing players who are becoming separated from each other in a 1v1. But that's so rarely happening in a 3v3 that I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's the best idea. Like, Rocket League's pretty easy to understand, and I think if you can just get your head around what's happening in first person perspective, this is how you're gonna, like, follow the, the, the game the most easily. Nice little pass there by. Chicago, that's unfortunate. JNAPS just bumped him on the takeoff. Looks like Turbo had it under control anyway. Almost a counterattack by Dig down the middle. Dignitas is definitely looking a little bit um, careless here. What is this touch by... Um, what is this touch by Turbo? Let's just think about what's happening here. So, Violent Panda is committing into the G2 corner. For a 50-50, when Yukio is definitely not in the game here. Not really much, uh, at least. And, you know, the options for what could happen here are mostly the ball goes clear to an, an, an G2 can take control. Or, very rarely, this 50-50 bounces out in a way that Turbo Pulsar, the only other player for Dignitas, can actually follow up on it. So I, I don't really like this 50-50. I talked about yesterday uh, when we're doing the NRG versus Flipside review why 50-50s um, can be bad in 3v3 when you're like the last man back for your team and you're 50-50ing with the first man forward and the other team. Yeah, most of the time the other team are going to take control of that ball because they have backup. You don't. Here it was the second man versus second man, but it was the position that was the problem. The position there is really compromised for Dignitas. Most of the ways the ball is going to fly out are going clear of danger. And even if it does go into the box, Turbo has to take a huge risk to go for it against a, a net that's defended by Rizzo. So I don't really agree with kind of like throwing yourself into the back corner like that um, in Valpana's position. I think it's mostly going to result in your team losing control of the ball. It's a bit unlucky for G2 here that j could get that ball to Rizzo. Oh, Rizzo. Oh, I wish he caught you, Killer. That would be a great goal. 
That would have been fantastic. Sorry, I've not been reading too much of the Twitch chat now. I've been pretty focused on the games. I've not seen these games yet. Uh, but if you do want to ask me a question, just try to use at Johnny Boy. I'll, I'll, I'll look over every once in a while. Don't worry if, about asking twice if I don't see it the first time. You can uh, feel free to ask again. Um, yeah, I'm actually I'm impressed by G2's rotation for the most part. They look pretty calm. Look pretty. Look pretty. Uh, well positioned for the most part. Wait, who, who is this flying over the top? Just as I say that, is that Rizzo? All right, I don't know. I don't know about this. So this is like a pretty good illustration of why trying to center the ball is uh, second man of the 50-50 can put your third in a pretty awkward spot because there Rizzo tries to go for a ball and gets beaten to it. And now look what's happening. <laughs> this is not ideal. Pretty good chance for Dignitas happening right now, and it's all because uh, third man went for a center ball. You know, you can stop that from happening by not trying to center the ball as uh, second man to your third man. Same thing. You don't always want to... Sometimes it's better not to infield pass to your third man as second man. Because it's so risky for the third man to go for it. That's a nice shot. Turbo. Well, let's see uh, what happened here. Yukio getting an early dodge onto this one. Oh, JNAP's just taking a little bit too long, it seems, to get on top of that one. Turbo beating him to it. Was this just a no boost situation for JNAPS, maybe? Possibly. I think he might have just tried to play this a bit too greedy. He might have been trying to pass that to Chicago instead of looking uh, to just get the ball to a more safe location. Will I be watching the G2 versus NRG game at some point? I'm not sure, maybe. The other game that was getting requested a lot was Cloud9 versus Flipside. So we might look at that one. Uh, not today, though. We might look at it tomorrow or another day. If you've got any other suggestions, though, besides uh, chat, just let me know. I think it's going to be a big power ranking changes in EU for the upcoming RLCS. I could see that, yeah. I could. Oh my goodness, what a shot by JDAPS. Wow. Well then. That is about as good as you get. Yukio not doing enough with this ball, unfortunately. He did get it away from his team's goal, but uh, if you hit that sidewall, it's just going to come straight back into the danger area. It would have been better to pop that ball a bit higher. Closer to the wall. Um, thoughts on Sam being added? I'm loving the more regions in RLCS change. That's got to be a good thing in my opinion. In my opinion. Uh, today's Johnny Boy lesson. Second man should not immediately make a center play. Look at that. I've paused this with half of Chicago scored showing. Um, what would be a good way for a second man to play the ball while others rotate? Um, you just you kind of want to just play it a bit slower. Wait for your first man forward to recover and actually be back in the game. Everything's situational, of course. Everything's situational. But yeah, if you are going to make a play as second man, you want to give your first man a good chance to rotate out. This is actually a pretty good example. Let's watch this uh, goal here. So back it up a little bit. JNAPS is the first man forward. He's now rotating out. That's why Rizzo can go for the center ball without being too worried because he knows Chicago is going to be able to commit to this ball because even if Chicago gets beaten Jay Naps is still relevant um, and able to get back into the play it's not that you shouldn't pass the ball as second man to third it's just should you be doing it with where your first man is positioned and where your what your landing is going to be like it's all all things have to be considered in that exchange this is actually a perfect example of when you should do it because Jay Naps is getting out fast um should team up with another caster content creator to cast a 1v1? Yeah, it would be done. I mean, the reason I tend not to do that is because I don't really like casting online on, like, Discord or something. What just happened? Yeah, pretty bad touch there by JNAPS. Like, he has, to, he has to make a touch here. This is a very 1v1 kind of play where the ball is going to bounce into a position that the other team could shoot for, uh, could shoot from. So on your way to getting boost in the back corner, you have to hit the ball in such a way that the other team can't get a shot on target. But JNAPS doesn't really do that. He pops it off the wall instead of hitting it straight up into the air. That's one of the uh, aspects of the game that will be most helped by players just practicing ones, you know, getting those little awkward touches. Um, you have to do that all the time in 1v1. You don't have to do it very often in threes. Uh, who do you think should take Miho? He really deserves a starting spot. I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, there's a lot of um, 
fresh talent coming out in North America. It's not just as easy as that, just saying Miho deserves a spot. Who should pick him up? You know, there's a lot of players to choose from these days. More goes into it than just who uh, is the best and like ranked or who's the got the most experience in the past. The challenge by Jane Apsey made up for his own earlier mistake there. Second the request for the G2 NRD match, okay. Have the ability to have a color commentator and a play by play caster. I would I would do like uh, I would love to do a in real life uh, video review with somebody or a tournament game review, but I'm not sure about doing um, Discord ones too much. I don't really like Discord casts, for example. Discord reviews are good. Because uh, you have a bit more time to just chill and talk about things. But Discord casts, I don't know, I don't like them anymore. After doing so many live casts. Um, what's going to happen after the VOD review? A lot of people are asking for Wonder Mike versus Lethemir. I don't know if those guys are even available. I think Wonder Mike said he was. I don't think, I don't think Leth is. I don't know if Leth is. But we... Um, oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. What? This landing by Violet Panda. He just, like, bounces perfectly into position. What a recovery, though, to get this pass. The Turbo Pulsar, who should absolutely be scoring this. If he just booms that ball, that's a goal. But he's fluffed it, took it a bit late. G2, hang on. Wait, maybe there's more to this game. It could have been Valentine with a good save. You're playing hot right now. Okay, Wanda Michael. Have to see what left saying. I don't know um, if we'll have time for a one series. We could definitely do that matchup another day, if not today. I, um,. I want to do some replay reviews after later on this stream as well, if possible. G2 have got really good backboard coverage for the most part of this series. Very impressive, uh, like, delay of entering the goal area with their third man. Some good patience there by Rizzo uh, doing exactly that as we were talking about it. Yeah, Dignitas just don't have that... Um, that man in the midfield just absolutely banging in goals at 100 plus kilometers an hour every time he touches the ball. Kdop is a tough player to replace. Very, very tough player to replace. Not many players can shoot as well as Kdop. Nice bump by uh, Rizzo. Now, okay, this is a very good example of what could be considered a super risky pass to your third man. So here, Rizzo is not recovering very quickly. He is fighting with Yukio. Um, so Chicago going for a pass to JNAPS here. I don't think this is a good idea. Uh, you know, obviously, there is a world where Chicago nails this pass. JNAPS nails the shot. G2 win the game. But is that uh, world the most likely world to occur? I don't think so. I think a more likely world, a far more likely world, is Chicago hits this pass a little bit too close to Turbo Pulsa. Turbo Pulsa beats Jane Apps to the ball, hits it literally anywhere except into Jane Apps's car, and then they score in the counter attack. Like, what, what's harder to do? For Jane Apps to hit the ball perfectly into the top corner past Turbo Pulsa, who will be coming as fast as possible at him to try and get the save, or for Turbo Pulsa to hit the ball literally anywhere past Jane Apps? You've got a goal the size of the, like, the, the halfway line, right? The, anywhere. Obviously, it's easier for the defender here, so you shouldn't go for this pass. But um, it almost works out. I don't know if they knew that Turbo Pulse was boost starved or something. Like, if, you, if you've got a team boost starved, yes, then it does make those plays a bit more viable. But in general, you know, if you're not sure what the boost uh, totals are like for goalkeepers, probably not a good idea to be going for that play. That's one of those times where backs in the second man, a third man is not the best. Yeah, we got some pretty good YouTube screens here going on here. I don't have VSync on or anything. It's just YouTube just being silly. We got this in max quality. I swear we do. Yeah, we do. Looks decent. It's just Rocket League's got so many moving frames. Should he just put it straight down for Rizzo to try and tap it in? I think he should probably just try and like take control. Uh, like try and maybe force a 50-50 of his own with a goalkeeper. Like, just catch the ball on the back wall. Maybe try and dish it in. Like, I think dishing it in or 50 50 with a goalie is better than forcing JNAPs to 50 50 with a goalie. Like, Chicago could probably have done it himself. It is tempting, though. It is tempting to just go for that, that center ball. 
It looks, um, it always looks so juicy. Good turn by Jay Naps. Maybe a pass would have been better there, Chicago, but we're going to get another chance. Good leave there. There is a really smart leave to let Chicago come in for the power clear instead of cutting across the ball himself. All right, so there we have a really nice uh, setup by Jay Naps. Not only has he centered the ball, but he's threatening a double touch, so we've got hesitant players all over the place. Turbo also waiting to make a last ditch save. It probably should have been a game win there for G2 if Rizzo had buried the shot. I don't know if OSM and Wonder Mike would be a good idea because of the different server. What a save by Yuki. Oh my goodness. Look at this pre-jump save. That's nasty. Getting right in the way of Rizzo there. Yeah, for the most part, Dignitas just don't look like they have the... They don't look like they have as much goal scoring potential. They look very solid. They look uh, very difficult to get the ball past. But they don't have somebody who's got like the um, that you know positional brilliance in attack as K Dop. Like there doesn't seem to be anybody who's really easy to pass to. They don't have uh, somebody who's as consistent at shooting as well. There's, that's the two thing. The two things, of course. Everybody talks about. How good K Dop shooting is. Now that's a good goal. Um, but not many people talk about how good his positioning is in attack. How did this get uncontested? Oh, Yukio just got straight up beaten to the ball. What a finish by J Daps. Wow. What a goal. Did Yukio step up too far here? Yeah, he did. So I actually called Yukio out on this, and I, I think it was the first game of this series. He's done it again. He, from his perspective, he's thinking it's going to be a 50 50. It might not be. It could just be a hard clear for the other team. And he's caught driving off uh, up the field too early. This is what Justin was doing a few times against Flipside and getting caught out you know, too far forward. Yukio there should be more worried about the hard clear. Should be more um, ready for it should it occur. Obi-Wan's food. Thanks to the six month Thanks tier one. Retweeting that picture of my dog. Oh, it's your dog. Free. Oh my goodness. Right. Before we do anything else, we have to we have to show that uh, the picture Is of the dog. Is this Rizzo's tier three review, Kappa? Rizzo's tier three review. I don't think Rizzo is. Wait, is Rizzo a tier three sub? Did somebody gift Rizzo a tier three sub to me? Check this out. We've got, um, we've got uh, Obi Wan's dog watching Devo versus Kronovi. This is uh, one of my oldest videos. Actually, well, not one of my oldest, but quite an old video. Envy Devo. There we go. So. Wait, is this the rematch of Devo versus Kronovi? Or is it the, the first time they played? The first time they played, I think... Kronovi got the win the second time uh, Devo got the win, if I'm not mistaken. Nobody, not many people watched the second match though. Not compared to the first, at least. 87 Squirrels, thanks to the Prime sub. Papa Smurf, thanks to the 250 bits. Let's see what happens next. I've not seen this series, remember. This is the first time I've seen it. A lot of takeaways already. Oh my goodness. Okay then. Let's uh let's watch this again. What just happened? So demo wait, we have to we have to go back here. We have to go back. So kickoffs usually do result in a few volatile situations. Yukio drives forward, doesn't actually take himself out of the game, which is smart. I wanna give Yuki a little heads up here. A lot of people would have just flown in here and gone for a block and then taken themselves out of the game. But Yukio actually realizes he's most likely getting beaten. Uh, he tries to go for a demo on Rizzo. And if he doesn't get it, he's just going to turn around and go for another demo on Rizzo. How about that for a play from Yukio? I love it. Just go for the demo. And if it doesn't work, go for another demo. It's actually really smart, though, because he didn't take himself out of the game. And he was able to shut down the dribble. Problem is, JNAPS is right there. And nobody for Dignitas was ready to either contest Jay Naps or get a good clear on this. Turbo Pulsa almost own goaling, but he, he knocks it into position for Chicago to to miss. Yeah, I just wanted to see that 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 demo by Yukio. It was actually pretty smart. To not jump and go for a block on the outside. Just uh, turning around and killing the guy. Jay Naps is looking to catch somebody out of position there. Um, with that little touch near the wall, but nobody was really committing for digging tests who are sitting pretty far back for the majority of this game. 
That's something that KDOT probably is better than Yukio at. That's reading hard clears. Yukio might have better shot stopping and he might have better, maybe better back wall defense, but I think uh, KDOP is a beast at reading hard clears. What a shot by Chicago. This passing play by G2 is really quite on point, wasn't it? It's very impressive. Um, you think G2 and had a bad run, bad run with Croak, so him and JNAPS are similar type players? They just really struggle to all play well at the same time. Like sometimes Cronovia would play well, sometimes Rizzo would play well, sometimes JNAPS would play well. They never all played well. They didn't like do a Cloud9 Grand Finals of Season 6. Yeah, I think in this in this shot we need to get rid of the player cams, if nothing else. Player cams have got to go from here. They're literally blocking part of the goal. <laughs> They're blocking like uh, almost half of the goal on either side. Alright, that's a goal for Dignitas, yeah. Whiff from G2. Rizzo getting beat. Chicago with a whiff. Yukio read the whiff. Chicago's got to take the blame there, unfortunately, for him. He had a good goal to start the game, but he just had a complete miss in defense. Yukio had a good, uh, did a good job ignoring Chicago, actually. And to speak a bit more to that, um, Yukio's going up for a rebound where in a position where there's no way that he's going to react in time to a whiff if it happens. So he has to just go for the ball and hope the whiff happens. And it does actually end up being a really smart play because if the whiff does happen, he gets a goal. If the whiff doesn't happen, you can just recover and get back into the rotation. What happened to the third of G2 here? We have to back this up. So there's Chicago at the game. Oh, they just double committed. Well, yeah, that's a good old turn around and dribble your teammate from... Uh, is it JNAPS here? They, yeah, dri JNAPS just dribbled dribbled Rizzo here. So that, that's how uh, G2 ended up getting scored on. He just dribbled Rizzo who was attempting cl to clear the ball. Kasotra, thanks to the tier 1 sub. Much appreciated. Um, the face cams, I like the faces. No, this is fine. Maybe don't have them up all the time. I think switching them on and off is interesting. You know, there's got to be some other Rocket League stats that you could put up in the sides of the field that would be interesting to have on every now and then, besides face cams. But, yeah, for goals and for um, some some moments like this, you want to be able to see the face cams. Like, watch this uh, little Dignitas face cam moment as Turbo Pulse at own goals. Yukio with the face bam. You wouldn't get that if uh, we didn't have the face, face cam. He's... Really well disguised face palm though by Yukio. Let's just take another look at that. So one of his favorite things to do in this position when he, you know, when he when his teammate own goals and then he accidentally face palms, he transitions into an eye itch uh, just to make sure that his uh, his teammate doesn't get tilted by this. If Yukio doesn't um, fake the eye itch here, then Turbo might see Yukio face spamming and that could just tilt the living daylights out of him and then they're, gonna, they're just going to lose the series. So really nicely done there by Yukio to adapt into the eye itch. That could have been a series losing move if he didn't fake this. Yeah, Turbo a little bit off his line here, there's no, no real reason to be there. You'll see that a lot in lower rate in the lower ranked games. Um, players who are rotating into the goalie position they don't go inside the goal. They go just outside the goal for some reason. Um, and they think, yeah, this will be fine. I'm a little bit off the goal line. You know, want to be a little bit closer to the ball. Should it come Should it come my way? Um, but actually all they're doing is making it that they're going to be in an awkward position. Sometimes. Not often, Bible but sometimes. Thumb. Like Tur Turbo Pulse was there. See Savage, thanks for 28 month tier 1. How are you doing? That's almost all the months. You can start try as well with a tier 1 sub. Much appreciated, man. Yeah, we're all tied up here. Oh, okay. JNAP's actually better leaving that than uh, redirecting into his own half. That pass by Turbo Pulse up. Wait a minute. Did JNAP save this? How? What a save by JNAP's. He actually did just save this. It was Rizzo kills Violent Panda. It's a nasty save by JNAP's. Some good back wall defense by G2 again. Two players doing well in the back wall. First JNAP's and Rizzo. JNAPS continues to be a pretty monstrous aerial player. Far less uh, impressive. We'd have to be 
Dignitas uh, positioning on this play. Divine Lapina fall off the post. Y'all, wow, nearly, <laughs> nearly an embarrassing moment there for Divine Lapina, but they get away with it. Now I actually don't mind this play for Rizzo. This is, this is interesting. So he doesn't chip the ball lightly. Uh, towards Turbo, just give it straight to him. What he tries to do is just launch it over the goal as high as possible. Because what that does is it gets uh, a lot of boost wasted for Dignitas to take zero players out of the game. Actually quite smart. Oh, wow. That's a pretty nasty redirect by Yukio. Turning at the last second, he put an absolute huge amount of acceleration on the ball. I don't feel about JNAP's performances of late. Seems he's gotten a bit better, still inconsistent. He's looking, I think, you know, like pretty pretty much like you said, you know, he's looking better, but I mean, I can only base it on this series because I've not really been watching much of JNAPS recently, but this series, you know, he's not looked uh, invisible like he has for other series. He's actually been doing stuff and causing a lot of problems. That's what you want a player like JNAPS to be doing. Yeah, not too many mistakes. Few, but not not too many. Not, a seri not uh, enough to lose a series like... Uh, automatically I don't actually know who wins this game that's quite interesting it's like literally watching it first time I have no idea who wins pretty good uh, series actually good recommendation by twitch chat so thanks to twitch chat for that Rizzo has been impressive mostly this uh, series for the moments when he didn't go for the ball when he chooses not to said some really good turns away Lee some good leaves NRG could uh, definitely do a bit more of that for, um, or could have used that a bit more in their final against Flipside at times. Let's see if there's going to be a clutch goal here. Wow. Okay, Yukio. Somehow reaching that ball again. Terrible not committing in because it would have been risky. And JNAPS is again causing problems. This is what you want JNAPS to be able to do. Just have confidence to go in and take people out of the game. This is what he's really good at. That's and, you know, scoring tons of goals, of course. You just want him involved, really. I wouldn't mind seeing a season this season where Rizzo's actually quite quiet. Um, against, like, uh, lower rated teams. Like, I don't think they need the triple carry uh, three beast player like line up against you know some of the teams in North American RLCS at least save the Rizzo pop off for the big games wow that's a cheeky shot from did Turbo even get a touch on this it looked like he did Vanilla got credited with a shot but I feel like Turbo hit this did he not? is it just an optical illusion? it looked like the ball got faster much less, um, I don't want to put this. Yeah, definitely less aim and a lot of Dignitas' touches than there used to be. They're kind of just letting the game play itself for large parts of this series. Oof, okay, well, they're still, like, really good mechanically, so they can get away with it, but, you know, OG Dignitas would have been putting a lot more passes together here. Terrible Pulse just boom in it here. He had, he had options to either side. I wonder if we're not going to see as many passes from Dignitas with this new lineup, but some more boomers trying like brute force wins mechanically. I think uh, Rizzo should be the Kraken of G2 release uh, when the time comes, yeah. I think they'll change the RLCS format this season for Sam joining. I think they have to, don't they? Well, of course, they have to change something. G2 vs CBD series is going to be next. They didn't stream much of that one, did they? I wanted them to... I, I wish they streamed the whole thing. It sounded like an interesting series. Yeah, I heard that there are going to be replay files for Wissoi, um after everything had been uploaded to YouTube 24 hours later. So I, actually, right now, I guess, the, the replay files should be out. I don't know where they are, though, I'm afraid. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, Sam and RLCS is South America. That's If you're hearing Sam and RLCS, that's what that means. Yeah, do this are just trying to win a game pretty much with mechanics right now. They're just trying to outspeed G2. But I mean, uh, G2 are a pretty fast team, so I wonder if that's going to pay off. This is like a, I would say a 50-50 in terms of mechanics. 
both these teams. Oh, that could be it, and there it is. It actually doesn't end with uh, mechanical ability. It ends with just uh, a mind game by Turbo, and Turbo going for a bunch of bumps in the net. He might have caught a piece of Rizzo there, actually. Did Turbo. Might as well, you know. If you're recovering, if you're getting out of the opposition net, why not go for a bump onto whatever goalie might be there. All right, let's go to the start of game five. This does, I know the winners of the next two games now because I saw the final score for this but that was so that was that game we just saw was the only one that I wouldn't know the result for the rest of the series was gonna write itself of course now, okay this pretty much I think sums up the the difference for Dignitas so far where's the pass to Yukio where is it was Violent Panda going for a pass we'll never know because Turbo Pulse had double committed and just boomed it straight down the line Huh. That's interesting. Maybe it'll take a while for Dignitas to figure out their passing plays with Yukio. Because there have been not very many passing plays in this series. Not very many at all. Especially compared to, you know, what Dignitas were capable of with KDOP. Like you count how many of KDOP's goals were assisted. You're probably going to reach a pretty high number. Of course, he does score some solo goals, but... How many of those goals were just... Infield pass to K-Dop, goal. Downfield pass to K-Dop, goal. Backboard pass to K-Dop, goal. A lot of times you would see this, uh, you know, not just once or twice, but throughout an entire series, even in a, one game, you just get a whole bunch of assisted K-Dop goals. Love the infield pass for Chicago there. It's very well placed. Very safe. He put his third man in a really safe position to attack the ball. Oh wow, and Yukio's just driven off the goal line again. Wow, this is like such a consistent problem for Yukio right now. Wait. Where was Violent Panda? Maybe Yukio thought Violent Panda's back already? I don't know what exactly happened to Dignitas rotation right here. Like that's a 50-50, Turbo Pulse just made a 50-50 happen. Uh, then the ball goes to Chicago who hits it up. Everybody on Dignitas is rotating back. Turbo Pulse goes for the ball again. Gets a, gets a piece of it. Yukio is driving forward towards another 50-50. The only thing I could think of is that Yukio thought Violent Panda was behind him so that he could drive forward and cheat up on the 50-50 in case it went well for them. But yeah, as you can see, Violent Panda is not behind Yukio, so that would make Yukio the last man. C plus 273.15. Thanks to the uh, Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that. He trusted the 50-50 too hard. It's like the third time that's happened for Yukio this um, this series. He's tr he's like uh, moved up on what he thinks is going to be a good 50-50 and it turns out not to be. It's probably not the best idea. That's a pretty good pass by Turbo, isn't it? It's a bit more OG Dignitas there. Somebody was saying, uh, or I saw a thread at the, after this match was over, which was like poor Yukio and it was him packing up his keyboard. Well, we'll probably see that at the end. He was like packing up his keyboard and his teammates left. Um, I can't imagine that Go they left because they're mad at him. He's still recovering from the effects of carrying Jesse all the time skeptical. Skeptical, this is true. Yukio does have to carry Jesse all the time. Oh wow, wait, hold on, let's back this up. Let's back this up just a little bit. So JNAPS gets a 50-50 in the air and Chicago goes up for it yeah it's probably not the best time to go up for a for a aerial as third man is it Chicago by Magic thanks for 25 months in a row of tier 1 appreciate that dude how you doing do I still host tournaments occasionally yeah I don't know what possessed Chicago to go up for that ball when uh, the defense could very well have full boost and if not beat him to it, then definitely contest him to it. 50-50 was not a good... Uh, would, would most of the time not be a good outcome for him there, so... Strange to see him going for one. Oh, wow, that's uh, ambitious. As Chicago just stopped, started flying around. In comes Chicago again, a mile away from the ball. <laughs> a little bit ambitious, maybe. I think Chicago needs to be a bit more selective in this uh, game five. 
what he goes for and what he doesn't. J Naps with a pass, another pass. Okay. Loving the G2 are willing to go for these passing plays. They're not just aimlessly hitting the ball. Turbo with the mind game. Now, is this deliberate by Turbo? Is this deliberate? Because he knows Yukio is up and he might just miss this on purpose. You never know. He might be missing that on purpose. This is why we need to hear the comms. He could just say, I'm leaving it, I'm leaving it, and then try and get a fake aerial play to Yukio. Which would be absolutely insane if that's the case. Um, again, though, we'll never know. Unless we ask. The two guy 95, thanks to the Twitch Prime sub. How are you doing? You've not seen the new G2 roster play? Have they been doing? They're looking they're looking alright, you know, they're actually looking pretty much like what I expected them. I, th I thought this would be a good addition to their team. Um, I really rate Chicago. The thing that's most impressed me though is that they look like they're making a lot of passing plays, they're making a lot of team plays. It's not just like Jay Naps in Chicago trying to make a bunch of solo plays. Most of their goals have been team goals, which is impressive. And they're really look it's looking like Chicago brings brings like good plays out of Jay Naps, which is really important. Because we all know Rizzo does. Rizzo brings like some good plays out of Jay Naps, but uh, you need the other player to be doing that as well. How you doing, Dark X? It's going pretty good, thank you. Rizzo with this solo play. That was very, very smooth. Just dribbles Yukio, and look at that dish. Wow. He did not waste any time with that one. What a finish. That's a huge play by Rizzo. He just ruined Yukio at the near post before that. Yukio going flying past the ball, hoping that uh, he can catch a piece of it. Gets absolutely nothing. Yeah, Rizzo's looking impressive. Very, very impressive. Definitely still the best, I would say. Or uh, definitely still the smartest player on G2. The addition of Chicago has not changed the fact that Rizzo is probably the smartest player on this team most of the time. Or at least this uh, from this one series at least. Maybe maybe for the rest of the tournament, Rizzo is playing like a headless chicken and Chicago is really smart. But I would say so far, Rizzo looks like the brains of the team. All right, so some nice positioning here by Rizzo again. Covering a lot of angles. Well played by Jane Abbs. He avoided a demo and got a good touch on this. And okay. Who would have, guys, who would have scored this goal? Which player, tell me, which player used to put those top corner 10 times out of 10? Who can get it right first? Get up. Yes, Sinister. You're right. That. Jesse, of course, Jesse, yes. Sis, John Sandman, Neat Mike, all correct answers. <laughs> so Mythical likes the Twitch Prime sub. Now guys, I'm not, this isn't me hating on Yukio. He's a very good player. But he's a very different player to gate up. Um, he's had some clutch moments, but I'll tell you who's had more clutch like moments. It's probably gate up. Gate up sets uh, a lot more times where you've like really needed a goal and gate up's just like, yeah, no problem. Top corner. Just gonna hit this into the top left corner so the other team can do nothing about it, you know. I could try to place this, a lot of people would try and place this shot top corner. Nah, k -Dop just booms these top corner, so you, you don't have a chance. Chicago would have no chance. The ball's just in the net before he can even reach it. Unfortunately, k -Dop is not on this team anymore, so they don't have anybody to bang in that shot. And they're just gonna concede on the counter attack. So there's the difference between 3-all and 4-2. k -Dop. No goal. Instead, Get counter-attacked on. Get scored on. Nice pass by Chicago. Good finish by JNaps. But that's what they're going to need to do. They, they've got to adapt now. So, like, let me just add to this discussion here. KDOP versus... Or K, comparing KDOP to Yukio. They are completely different types of players. Yukio... Um, did a lot for Flipside when he played for them. He actually did the most on that team. There was no debating that fact. He was the best player on that team. Better than Kuxer when they finished off uh, 2018. And uh, that's why Dignitas picked him up. is because they could get one of the best players in Europe. One of the best players in the world. A player who looked like he might even be better than K-Dop in a lot of ways. But K-Dop, Violent Panda Turbo Pulsar worked 
for so long and against so many different teams and in so many different tournaments, it worked as well as it did because they had like almost a perfect combination of players. You had a player, Violent Panda, who uh, went backed up with a solid, um, maybe even the best player in the world, Turbo Pulsa, and uh, when given the easiest player in the world to pass to, KDOP, really shone with the assist game. Turbo Pulsa, like I said, maybe the best player in the world while well, he was at Dignitas. Test. Possibly not the case anymore. We'll have to wait and see what happens in 2019. And then you've got KDOP finishing every single goal. Now they're going to need to adapt their gameplay a little bit because Yukio wants to ball chase a little bit more. He wants to challenge in the air a little bit more than KDOP will. He wants to push up a little bit more as third man. Try and play like the old uh, We Dem Girls style. Like he's, he's definitely better than KDOP at a lot of things. But uh, are those things what Dignitas need? Possibly. Possibly not. We'll have to wait and see. Oh, what's that? Wait a minute. What was this? Is that an another crossbar? Huh. I wonder who would have scored this. I wonder who would have put that in. If only there was a player that would score these shots instead of hitting the crossbar. Man, I just can't think of anyone. I guess we'll just have to keep Yukio. Nah, I'm only joking. I'm, I'm just memeing around. But guys, you, you get the idea. The point is, this, although... You know, I although like the overall skill level of uh, you know players and Dignitas, I don't think it's changed that much. I think that Kidop and Yukio are pretty close in terms of what they can bring to a team if they're given the perfect team for them. I think that they both probably bring just about the same to the table. They're both very close, if nothing else. Okay, we got a little shot of Garrett G here. That's cool. <laughs> Maybe there's another game. No, there's not another game happening. Why are we looking at Garrett? Anyway. Uh, you know, if if uh, you don't find the perfect blend of players, then it doesn't matter how good you are as a player. You're not going to, like, perform um, at your best. And these shots are KDOP specialty. The shots that you are missing, they're KDOP specialty. Just edge of the box, bang it into the top shelf kind of goals. UQ is more about the double touching. He's more about the, like, straight up aerial finishing like this is a Yukio goal unfortunately for him it's actually JNAPS who's scoring it it's also quite a JNAPS goal as well but yeah this this type of goal is what you would ex uh, like maybe expect Yukio to be scoring also you'd expect Kato to be scoring that because he scores literally everything but yeah looks like Dignitas might have some issues they don't look like they're gelling together as well as uh, they did when they had Kato up on the team wonder if Vitality are also just going to flop that would be interesting wouldn't it like, KDOP joins Vitality. Oh, what a finish by Turbo, right? Am I right? Now, imagine if KDOP joins Vitality and then both Dignitas and Vitality have terrible seasons at the same time. JNAP's at the pre jump on goal. Unlucky, bit. Another shot that goes in off the crossbar, though. Uh, yeah, I did see the clip of Vinyl Pan and Turbo leaving uh, Yukio behind at the end of this. I, I, I don't think that that's... Uh, I, I don't know... Um, if that was uh, like hate or anything. There was a massive double commit in the last game with Turbo and Yukio. Good finish by Turbo. Turbo's actually just manning up here. Um, I was too busy talking about the difference between y Yukio and KDOP, sorry. Who dismissed? Who dismissed the ball? Who is this? Is it Chicago? No, it's Rizzo. Rizzo! I did say he was probably the smartest player in the team, but you know, intelligence doesn't always translate to mechanical ability. Uh. Can you get a Garrett cameo review? I don't know about that. Dax uh, Bargainson, thank you to the Twitch Prime sub. Did I say thank you to, to, to Mythical as well? I feel like I did, but either way, welcome, guys. Hope you're enjoying the stream today. Another pass for G2. Oh, shame Rizzo moved up on this. Rizzo actually here just needed to not accelerate too much. He just wants to go forward maybe a little bit, but not too much. Because then it makes the pass harder for JNAPS to hit in the right spot. Like if, if Rizzo or if JNAPS did hit this ball into the spot where Rizzo wanted it, Yukio would have blocked it. That's why JNAPS doesn't pass the ball closer or uh, further forward. So the, what Rizzo could do to make that easier for him is not accelerate too much. Um, yeah, this is okay. This is a definitely this is definitely Yukio's ball. So we're looking at here for Dignitas. Let's watch this one more time. We're looking at the a pretty old fashioned um, like. Uh, 
offensive strategy which still works to this day like where you have one person down the line looking for a center ball somebody following close in case the center ball comes off the near post low and then another person following further behind uh their their job would be to catch a hard clear or a bad 50 50 if it if everything goes wrong or to go for anything up high so violent panic here as soon as this ball goes up high he should just leave it for yukio it's too high, it's too far back for him to be able to get a good shot on it, but Yukio can come over his head and actually boom this. And Violent Panda's completely screwed him over there by jumping in his way. That was just a, like a failure to play his role correctly. And yeah, that could be the difference between winning and losing this game. It really could. I don't know how, this, how many goals this uh, ends with, but small things like that. Uh, when do you need a Silvers match? Not today, mate. I'll tweet if I'm doing that. How's K-Dot doing at Rhino Vitality? They've not been doing too great. Apart from in scrims, they've been doing great in scrims. So I've heard. But they're they're uh, not doing too well in uh, tournaments. They, they got just absolutely clamped by PSG on multiple occasions, which was a little bit funny because Scrub vowed to not lose to PSG at all for this entire year of 2019. And they've already lost, I think, like three times in competition. <laughs> Not the best start. <laughs> Was it? Did they lose two times or three times? I swear they might have. They've definitely lost twice, and it's only January. Ah, <laughs> oh, Scrub. That's so. That's so. It's really good of Scrub to say that though. A lot of people will be like, Ah, Scrub, what a moron. Why would you say this? Why would you say something so stupid as I would like? I would never lose to PSG in the whole year of 2019. It's because he knows that it's going to be talked about. Like, if they don't lose to PSG in 2019, he looks like a genius. If they do lose, he looks like a Muppet, and that's pretty funny, you know? It's a win-win. Gets talked about. I love those types of comments. Why do you think KDOP left Dig? I don't know anything behind the scenes uh, that um, that you guys don't know. But what I, I did hear, I heard one comment from Scrub Killer on his stream. Um... Whereas somebody asked him this exact same question. They asked, why did Dignitas... Why did KDOP leave Dignitas? Um, Scrub said it was nothing to do with player skill. And then he was like, no, no, I should stop talking. I should stop talking. And then he said, right after that, he's like, well, all I'll say is that their team environment wasn't the best. So if you're reading between the lines on that, I'm guessing that he just didn't... He didn't like playing uh, with uh, Turbo and Violent Panda. Maybe he didn't like the comms or the attitude or maybe he didn't like the... Uh, scrimming. I don't know. Something he didn't like about their their team environment, I guess. Wait a minute. This does go to... Oh, yes. I was about to say this does go to overtime, right? Because I knew it had gone to overtime, but I couldn't see how it was going to happen. Everything looked great for Dignitas, and then this happened. Bloop! Yukio, oh dear. Oh dear. Just jumps a little bit early here. He had a little bit too much momentum when he jumped. If he slowed down a little bit, that would have been easy peasy. Oh. This is not, it doesn't look like the best uh, team environment over there uh, on Dignitas. Doesn't look like the, the most. Yeah. Let's watch this again in the cameras. So, Yukio, I believe, is right now looking at Violent Panda and Turbo Pulsa to see, um, you know, how they're going to react to his caster save. And it looks like Turbo and Panda have both gone for the same move, which is interesting. That's good synergy, if nothing else. What they go for is to kind of lean back and sigh, uh, which if you, you know, obviously we can't hear it right now, but if we could, it would probably sound a bit like two people going like this. You know, they're not saying anything, but at the same time, they're saying quite a lot. And is it the best thing to be saying? Not really. This is a feels bad man for Yukio. This is a feels really bad. Oh dear. Um, they're not even looking at him. Oh no. Oh dear. Yikes. Uh, yeah, they've not looked at each other for this entire segment. Wow. <laughs> what are they? What are they? Come on. I don't think it's just a like uh, esports psychologist or something, or sports psychologist, right? I think uh, did I hear this right? And uh, maybe maybe I made that up. I don't know. But maybe they do. Maybe they don't. I swear I heard that they did. Like uh, this is pretty bad, um, like pretty bad psychologically for Yukio. This whole uh, situation. 
the last thing you need when you've owned gold, essentially own gold, to send it to overtime with just a couple of seconds left. Oh, if, if Yukio owned gold this as well, that would have just been brilliant. <laughs> it would have just been, oh, the reactions would have been incredible. But uh, yeah, the last thing you need when you own gold like that is your teammates like being your worst enemies. You're a team for a reason. You're not. It's not like whose whose fault is this? It's not ranked, right? It's not ranked where everybody's blaming everybody. This is a tournament. They're all here competing for money. It's their jobs. So it's their jobs at that point to be like, nah, sorry, man. Come on, we got this. We got this. Look at uh, Tainted Minds. If they scored that, or if they went to overtime, they'd be like, nice finish, mate. What a, what a goal. We've got this. Come on. Just taking it to overtime for the fans. Of course, it's easier said than done. It's hard to remain positive in this type of uh, moment, but you'd expect more from uh, the... The veterans on the team there. Turbo and Violent Panda, they should know that they've got to tr they be spe try especially, uh, you know, hard to make Yukio feel as comfortable as possible in this uh, environment. How come Violent Panda's just hit this, sh this shot so slowly? What happened? Yeah, he just like lost all the power there. Mini Heels, thanks for 200 bits. He says, I think Yukio perhaps needed some sort of encouragement there. In all fairness, it wasn't an easy save either. It wasn't the easiest save, but he probably should be saving it. He just panicked and jumped too early. If he like stopped, jumped, and then backflipped, the ball would hit the crossbar. Easy as. Yeah, he, he absolutely needed some encouragement. I'm not, I'm not at all mocking Yukio here. Like, uh, for looking over to see what Turbo and Panda are gonna say, he's probably looking over and be like, "Oh, sorry," and then expecting somebody to be like, "Nah, no problem, man. We got this. We could do this. Let's focus." It looked like they said a whole lot of nothing, <laughs> and they. Uh, did a whole lot of nothing as well. Give it up, NT, NTB. <laughs> Alright. Alright, Vanilla Panda. Not, not a bad touch. Also, incredibly close to being terrible. Oh, that's a tilter for Panda. He's just got randomly bumped off the boost. And an extra touch for Rizzo. Are they going for the demo play for the win? Oh. Oh. What a finish. Oh my goodness, the hype. That would, if that had ended the, uh, ended the match. This would have been like the single worst director camera moment in competitive Rocket League history. It's G2 versus Dignitas. Rizzo in front of Chicago. He's going for the block. He's gonna try drive into the goalie. But do any new people to Rocket League have a clue what's going on? No, they're thinking, why is Rizzo running away from the ball? What's going on here? What is he doing? Does he not see that Chicago is trying to get past him here? Why is he in the way? Like, this is <laughs> it's like why director cameras sometimes uh, could use a good old toggle button. I, I get why, like the advantages of director cameras when players are flicking their camera back and forth in kickoffs. It doesn't do that. It looks at the ball. Yes, there are moments where it's a good idea, but right now, director camera is uh, making this just a little bit confusing. I mean, we know what's happening, but most Rocket League viewers probably don't know what on earth is happening there. And director camera is to blame. How did Rizzo miss this bump as well, by the way? What happened? How did he... What What did he do? Like, I would love to see what Yukio did here to avoid the bump, but we have no idea. Oh, Rizzo just pre-jumped over the top of Yukio. I think the trick to uh, going for bumps there is actually not to jump until, until you're too late. Watch a lot of Jesse streams. Uh, Yukio does seem like sort of player who's who being benefit by being encouraged by his teammates. Yeah, absolutely. He's brand new on this team. That's a double whiff. Brand new on this team. You really need that extra encouragement when you're trying to step in and replace K Dot for goodness sake, who might be the most successful player of the past like year of Rocket League, maybe even two years. Nice bump. That's actually super sick. Did, did, is this Rizzo going for this bump? I've not really been paying attention to nameplates enough. Rizzo hits the crossbar, comes across the goal, bumps Yukio completely out of the way of this shot. And they get the win. Right, let's watch the end of the match here because I know there are some pretty interesting uh, things that happen with uh, the post-match players. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. Look at Yukio at the end too. Okay, hold on, I missed that. I was looking at G2. Oh yeah, Yukio looks over and then nobody's like looking at him. They're both just looking away. 
Ooh. Uh, right. Post match analysis XD. Listen, it's my speciality over here. Okay, let's see what happens. Some. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. The one arm hug, one arm handshake. Just uh, Chicago with a, a couple of solid handshakes there, actually. Bam. Nailed it. Two out of two. Impressive stuff. But you can already see that Rizzo and Jane have been on a team for longer. They went for the one arm hug. It's definitely a step up from the uh, handshake. All right, let's look at this. Yeah, fist bump. Nice, nice job, guys. Good job. Killed it. <laughs> fist bump just seems so out of place here. It's, uh, I don't know. For some reason, that's funny to me. <laughs> Great job, guys. Great stuff. Really nice work out there. Thanks for losing. Appreciate that. And then, yeah, oh, no, we don't see it. No. All right, hold on. We need to find the, the stream. Hold on. I've got to find the Wissoi stream so we can keep watching this clip. Because, or wait, I think I can find it on Rocket League Esports Reddit. Give me a second. Give me a second. Where is it? It was called Pur Yukio. Hold on. Hold on a second. Here it is. Pur Yukio. Okay. Let's watch Pur Yukio, apparently. You know when the All right, watch full video. We'll just go to the stream for this. Uh, so we need to watch the fist bumps again. Though. That's just amazing. Ah, oh, yes. Good job, Yukio. Great job, Panda. Fantastic work, Turbo Pulsa. Great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> is it just me, or is that like not the usual, not not the go-to post-match like uh, consolate, like uh, you know, consoling your opponents who lost? Yeah, Yukio's got to pack up his keyboard here. Turbo and Panda are just like seal air, mate. We're we're out of here. <laughs> it's bad. Bye, Yukio. He's just like wrapping up his keyboard looking so sad. I feel so bad, man. It's better than a cringy hug. Yeah, handshakes. What's wrong with a handshake? I'm a big fan of Yukio's boots, though. Looking good. D oh my goodness. They're just really trying to sell this. Right, look at this. D Yukio. And then it's just like defeat. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, it's his birthday as well. Oh, it just doesn't get any better. It's all going from bad to worse. Oh, I feel so bad. I do love a bit of cringe though. Defeat. <laughs> uh, annihilation. Oh man. This just didn't go very well for, for Dignitas and Yukio. A lot needs to change. Uh, mainly I think honestly the best or the main thing that needs to change is this attitude. Like we can't hear the comms. I don't know what their like team dynamic is like. I don't know what their like uh, their attitude is like but it seems like they could improve a little bit in the uh, camaraderie aspect. Need to up that a little bit.